Our readings this week begin in chapter 7 with the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 7, two points regarding the provision and the word of the King, Jesus. First, do you have faith in the King's unlimited supply? Then pray, for He promises, ask, and it will be given you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Do you have faith in the word of the king? Jesus says, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a man who built his house on the rock. Be wise. Put the king's words into practice. In your readings this week, you should have noticed that Jesus healed a noticeable number of times. Here are the 12 specific healings in order. Healing number one, Jesus heals a leper. Healing number two, Jesus heals the centurion's servant. This is the first time Jesus sends healing to someone who is not physically present. Jesus also draws our attention to the centurion's faith in Jesus before the miracle happens. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Matthew adds this note for us. And his servant was healed at that very hour. Matthew wants us and everyone who reads this gospel to know that the servant was healed the very moment Christ made his promise to the centurion. Healing number three, Peter's mother-in-law is healed. Healings four and five, two men possessed by demons are healed. Now you'll notice the demons recognize Jesus and they beg Jesus not to destroy them now, but to send them into a herd of pigs. The demons leave the men, run into the pigs, and run down into the water over the cliff. The response of this miracle of Christ is always odd to me. Verse 33, those tending the pigs ran off, went into town, and reported all, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. It's obvious that Jesus has the power over the demons. But can you explain to me why they would rather have demons among them than Christ to expel them from their midst? It doesn't make any sense unless the town is afraid of losing their livelihood in a similar manner. But it raises the question, what will you do for money? Instead of sending Christ away, they should have been thanking him and praising him for removing the demons. Healing number six, the healing of the paralytic with a twist. Some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Now the scribes who observed the miracle had a cow because Jesus forgave sins. Matthew lets us know that it's only in their thoughts, but Jesus wants you and me to know, verse 4, knowing their thoughts. Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? So which healing is more important, the healing of the body from disease or the healing of the heart through the forgiveness of sins? This is what should happen when a miracle of Christ happens before your eyes. Verse 8, when the crowd saw this, they were all filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to men. Praise God from whom all healing flows. Even the healing, and especially the healing, that comes from the forgiveness of sins. Healing 7 and 8, a woman and a little girl. Verse 22, Jesus turned and saw the woman and said, Take heart, daughter. He said, Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. Healings 9 and 10, two blind men. Healing 11, a mute man. Healing 12, a man with a shriveled hand. Jesus heals on the Sabbath in the synagogue, verses 9 through 13. Thank you for doing such good on the Sabbath, Jesus. 
12 healings so far, right? Well, not quite. I deliberately skipped over two verses. Verse 16, when evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. And then in chapter 9, verse 35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. There were a lot more than 12 healing miracles. Matthew simply chooses very carefully the 12 he wants us to see in fulfillment of the words of Isaiah to identify Christ the Messiah, the King. Verse 17, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. So here's the question. Were the miracles of Christ about his power or compassion? Was it to show forth his power over disease and the brokenness of man because of sin? Or do you think this is more about his compassionate love for mankind? Well, here's the answer right out of Matthew's own words. Chapter 9, verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. They were harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. Christ healed because he was compassionate. Matthew records his healings to show us that he is indeed the Christ, the King, to prove he is the one the prophets promised. But keep this in mind, everything Christ does, he does out of his compassion for us all. Our memory verse for the week comes out of this section, Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me. All you who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light.